No one thought Jessica Clements could ever survive after a roadside bomb in Iraq exploded under her truck, shooting shrapnel into three lobes of her brain. Doctors put her chance of living at just 2%. But Jessica beat those odds with her optimism and determination. Now she wants to inspire others to recover from their wounds. Jessica Clements had been a model in Akron, Ohio, when she left high school to join the Army. It gave me such a sense of pride putting on the uniform. And it was just the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life, putting that uniform on and knowing that I'm part of something. And I'm part of something that's going to make a difference in the world. I understand that in boot camp you got yourself into trouble. <laughs> Actually, I did. Did you? I had a hard time taking the drill sergeant serious sometimes they were trying to be so mean and stern and I would break a smile and I would laugh so I was always doing push-ups as a staff sergeant in Iraq Jessica spent her days driving fuel trucks I've heard that there are so many roadside bombs constantly exploding that you had to wear earplugs yes definitely really yes how how often would you hear IEDs exploding. Sometimes every day you would hear them for a period, maybe three, four days in a row you would hear them and then maybe there would be one day where things would be quiet so you knew the next day something was coming. Honest. Weren't you scared? Definitely. I mean, I remember days driving down the road thinking to myself, is today the day I'm going to get hit or am I going to get shot today? And just praying, okay, keep us safe, let us get where we need to go without any casualties. Her luck ran out on May 5th, 2004, when a bomb exploded under her truck, shooting shards of shrapnel, large and small, into her brain. I still have shrapnel that's remaining in my brain. This right portion here, you can see the little, the line yeah. from where my skull was removed. The neurosurgeons physically cut the right portion of my skull and removed it. Why? So my brain had room to swell. Because if the if he hadn't removed it, mm -hmm. the swelling might have done what? It would have caused so much pressure inside my skull that I would have died. The doctor put that half of Jessica's skull inside her abdomen for safekeeping and to keep the bone alive. I could show you. <laughs> he did. He placed it in there and sewed, sewed it shut so that skull piece would remain with me until I got back to the States and I was able to undergo surgery to have that skull piece replaced. It stayed in her abdomen for four months before doctors put it back on her head. And for much of that time, Jessica remained in a coma. I understand that a doctor at Walter Reed Hospital when you arrived in Washington wrote in your chart that you would probably remain in a permanent vegetative state. They only gave me a 2% chance of coming out of the coma and living, surviving. A 2% chance? Somebody has to be in that 2%, though. Why not me? Was there a lot of pain along the way? Oh, ridiculous amount of pain, yes. I hate to admit this, but there were days when I wondered to myself, if it would be better, if I would have been better off had I not made it, because I was in so much pain. Are you in pain now, a little bit? Um, actually, right now, I have a shooting pain that's going from right above my ear over to this side. It's kind of going diagonally across, but it's, it's nothing. I'm used to it. Every day, I have some sort of pain going on in this head, but I manage it. It's, it's not a, a bad thing. The constant pain, sporadic seizures and bouts of anger still cannot compare with what she's already endured, relearning how to walk and talk and more. Basically, I had to relearn how to think again and how to figure things out. I did have to learn how to walk again. One day, I remember, I sat back in bed and I moved my leg about an inch, trying to get it up on the bed. I had only moved about an inch, but... I had never been so happy before. I was just excited, okay, great, it moved an inch, so that motivated me. Okay, tomorrow I'm gonna try for two inches. 
let's see if I can get it going again. You smile and you're obviously an optimist. After what I've been through, I can't help but to be positive about things. Where the dickens does all this come from? Sometimes I wonder the same thing, how I'm so strong and able to get on with my day, but I just, I, I actually prefer myself and the person that I am now than the person that I used to be before this injury. What do you mean? I think, I think I'm a better person now. I'm not as judgmental. I don't take anything for granted anymore. Jessica believes she survived for a reason and that now she knows what that reason is. I believe that it's to help other people, so I decided to go into social work. You want to be a social worker for... I would like to work for the VA or the DAV, the Disabled American Veterans Association, so I can help other veterans. I'm still a soldier at heart and... You're still what? I'm still a soldier. Even though I'm discharged from the Army, medically discharged, I'm I'm always going to be a soldier and I'm always going to have that mentality. So if I can continue to help other soldiers, other veterans, that's, that's what I really want to do. There are wounded veterans looking in right now. What message would you like to pass on to them? I would love to tell them just to not give up. And no matter how bad your pain is, remember that tomorrow's a new day. Just keep that in your mind and just please stay positive and you will get through this. No matter how much it hurts, no matter That's right. how long it takes to recover. That's right. And for them to know that they're not alone. They are not alone.